Yunus. I am technical instructor for MIT's Integrated Design and Management program. Uh, today we're going to be talking about threads and thread cutting. Uh, you'll find that uh, we use threaded fasteners uh, for so many things in production and prototyping and fixing up your house, holding your car together. There are two basic ways to make threads. Um, one is by uh, rolling threads, and that's um, a very expensive process uh, for uh, meant for production of threads, uh, where they basically squeeze metal between two tools uh, like this and roll it, just like you would roll a little bit of clay or Play-Doh, and then they have their, their threaded uh, screw or fastener. Um, that's not super accessible to us. So what I'm going to show you today is how to cut threads using a tap and die set. Uh, taps being these that, that actually look like screws. It's, this is a cutter. looks a little bit like a cross between a drill, a bit, and a, and a screw. And it is intended to cut threads on the inside of a hole to make female threads. And a die looks like this and it is um, made so that it will create threads on the outside of a piece of stock. So this will make male threads. And we have a wrench to hold each of them, a tap and a die wrench. So to determine what size thread you need um, or, or how to create a certain thread in the material you're using, you can consult the, the tap and drill size chart, okay? And what we're gonna be doing here today is quarter 20 um, threads, which is uh, in the, it's we're using the inch system. So it's quarter inch, that's the nominal diameter, or nominal meaning that's what it's named, although that's not exactly what the size is. And 20 meaning it's 20 threads per inch. Uh, this just, it happens to be a very common size in the States. Um, and it's relatively easy to demonstrate and to show you how to make one. So to do, to make quarter 20 threads, I'm looking at my chart here, and it says I need a number seven drill, uh, which is another, uh, it, it's, a, um, it's a way to call a, a drill a different size using a sort of an old fashioned system where we have letter size, number size, fractional size, drills and they're all different sizes and you have this magical chart here that shows you what each individual size is. All right. So um, again I'm going to do quarter 20, number, it's going to be a number 7 drill size. What that means is that I'm, I'm basically making a, I want the uh, quarter 20 thread size which is nominally 0.25 inches um, and I'm going to, to, to make those I'm going to use a 0.2 inch drill bit and then go back in with the quarter 20 tap and remove all that material until the outside diameter of the threads is quarter inch or 0.25 or close to it. Okay. So we'll show you that in a sec. Um, so I'm going to start, I've, I've already started some of the process here. I've, I've taken a piece of aluminum and I've drilled the right size hole in it, the number seven hole. I'm going to take my quarter 20 tap. You'll notice that it won't just fit in there. The reason for that, in case it's not obvious to you, is that we're going to remove material from this undersized hole, and we're going to remove that. The we're going to remove everything that's not threads, basically, and we're going to leave something that looks a lot like this, except in the female form. This is what the tap looks like up close. It is, um, it, ha it looks like the screw itself except it tapers down and it has in this case three channels to um, clear out the metal as you're cutting, as you're cutting through like this with the tap uh, you're going to be um, creating lots of little tiny curls of metal and uh, you need to put them somewhere. It, uh, if you don't have those it would jam everything up and just snap. So. Uh, again, I've got the hole already in the piece of metal, and I've got my tap wrench here, which is a threaded 
clamp on it so that I can put my, this has a, a square uh, machined back to it and that fits right into here. Tighten it right up and it's going to go right like that. Now before I start cutting, I want to uh, add some wax to it. This wax is designed for doing exactly this, for tapping, and I put that in because it lubricates, uh, which keeps it cool and prevents a jam which would potentially break the tap. Uh, and it, it also keeps the, uh, the little chips of metal contained so that they don't fly all over the place. So I'm going to put this in. This is tapered so the front of it will fit down already before it starts to cut. Okay, And I'm going to get it as close as I can to uh, square power, uh, to, to a straight line with this piece here, and then I'm just going to give it a little bit of a turn until it starts to cut. Now it's starting to cut, and that means it'll hold a position here. And I'm just looking this way, and then I'm going to turn and look this way to make sure that it's not crooked. It's a little crooked, so I'm going to twist it and correct it at the same time. I'm gonna, that needs to be a little tighter. There we go. Okay, so now it looks pretty good from where I'm sitting certainly good enough to start a demonstration model. Okay, so remember I said when we when we turn this we're actually cutting little curls of, of metal inside the uh, the grooves here. Well, if we just kept going and going and going, we would uh, spinning around, we would have really big coils of metal that would jam up. So what we want to do is once we go around once, we want to back up and you can feel those chips breaking off. And then when you come back, you can tell where you need to start cutting because it'll stop moving. Now I'm going to turn again. Half a turn. Come back and then bring it back here. And now every time I do this, I'm creating lots of little tiny chips, but the little tiny chips won't clog up as much as the really long big chips. And if it breaks in here, it's, it's a bit of a, um, a pain. I mean, it, it, this tap is very hard. Uh, and this material that I'm tapping into is very soft. In this case, it, it could be steel or aluminum or what have you, but right now that it's an aluminum piece that we're turning threads into. If it breaks in there, especially uh, if it broke into something else that you've spent all week working on or a month working on, you would then have to invest your time taking the, a broken tap out, which is no fun. So especially on the teeny tiny little sizes, like think sizes below this size, um, you want to practice a lot before you go and do your finished one. So what we're doing here is I'm teaching you how to practice. I'm going to turn it again, break those chips, turn it again, and I'm just going to continue this cycle until I am through my piece of aluminum. hear it cutting. I don't know if you can hear it. I don't know if it makes it through the camera, but it, you can hear it cutting. And you can also feel it cutting and you can feel when you are just sort of gliding on what you've already cut. And I think I'm almost through. Yep. Okay, now I'm through. And it turns very easily. I've got some chips up here with the wax on it, and I've gone all the way through my hole. And so let's take a look. I think we have threaded holes. Yep. Now one thing I might want to do later is go in with a countersink and just relieve those holes a bit, because right now I can feel there's a, a little bit of a burr on there on both sides where the metal is sticking up above that that edge because it's been cut and it's, it's been bent out. But that's where we start. Okay, now we'll do the other part. We will cut threads onto a rod. We're going to cut metal threads. This more resembles the uh, a screw that you would buy in a store. Um, and this resembles the nut. 
So just as with the tap, the die is specifically sized for what I'm doing here. Uh, there's also a right way and a wrong way to put it on there. You can look at it visually and see that it, it's a lot, there's a lot, um, the hole there is smaller than it is there. That's because this is our, our lead in side. That's the side we start with like this because it's tapered to fit on top, okay? So again, I'm gonna give this some wax. I'm gonna fit it on there and the same rules apply. I want it to go on nice and even and nice and straight and square with a piece of aluminum stock. I'm cutting aluminum, by the way, in both pieces uh, because it's easier to turn, easier to cut. But these tools will also cut steel or brass or plastic. And am I spinning? I am. I'm spinning this thing. Okay. Okay, sorry for the, the gap here. I had to bend this because this, uh, this piece was spinning inside the vise. So to avoid that, I put a little hook on the end. And now it shouldn't spin. So we'll start. We'll pick up where we left off here. Okay, so I can feel it starting to cut right there. If I listen carefully, I can hear it. Oops, there you go. That happens. The first couple of turns are the hardest because it's not really settled yet and it wants to fall off. Okay, so I can, I can feel where it, it wants to start cutting again. cutting my threads. In this case, I can see the aluminum curling up in there. And I go back like this, cut it, and those pieces get cut and they fall off. I'm going to keep turning. Half a turn. And I cut off my little chips. And this is the same cycle as before. It feels about the same on my hands as using the, uh, the tap. makes the same kind of noises because you're cutting the same material. And because this is uh, this die doesn't have any, uh, any limitations on, on height, I could make these threads all the way down to the bottom if I wanted to. Whereas with this tap, I can only really go and make threads that are about that from about here to here. From here forward, it's tapered in, and you're really only getting full-size threads in this area, and then it just stops. If I wanted to make much deeper threads, I would have to buy a special tap that was long enough to make the threads that I need. So going back to this, again, I can cut this as deep as I want, and I want it to be at least, at least as deep as the little nut that I made. So I'll keep going a little bit. So with just a few minutes of your time, you can start the uh, almost magical process of making threads onto pieces of metal. Give yourself some permission to fail because this is a new skill and as with any skill it requires effort and patience and practice and you're going to mess it up at first and that's okay. So here we have male threads that look pretty good, and then female threads on the nut, and hopefully, yes, they do in fact spin together. Because I haven't cleaned the edge, uh, the um, because I haven't cleaned the openings of the holes on the nut, like I said I was going to. It's a little bit tough going on here, but that's mostly just because there's a little burr on here. If I take those burrs off, it'll, it should slide right on.